Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important ideas in all of geology and all of oceanography, the study of oceans as well. This concept is called a convection current. So I'm going to show you what convection currents look like, but for you to understand what I'm saying, I need to go over a little bit of review so that you can understand this. This lesson is appropriate for physical science classes or geology classes or similar classes. Let's go ahead and get to it. So the first thing I want to mention is that there are different densities of objects, and you're familiar with this from like middle school, right? So if you have a lower density substance like gas or liquid or even a solid, then you have less particles per unit volume, you could say. Medium would be more particles per unit volume, and higher density would have more mass, more particles per unit volume, you could say. Now one thing to note is that molecules are always in motion, basically, always bouncing around, especially for a gas or a liquid, they're always bouncing into each other, interacting with each other. Solids move around less, but they still have some random molecular motion. The only exception to this is if some substance was at absolute zero. All right, well, let's go back to this real quick and talk about density. It turns out that you can separate substances by density because the more dense material are going to settle to the bottom, the less dense material is going to settle towards the top. And if you do something like this carefully, you can even do this at home. All right, and so this is the equation if you're looking for the equation for density. Well, like I said, density is probably review for you, but let's talk about temperature and motion of particles really quickly. So this is a simulation website that I used and I made a animation based on it. So if you take a look up here, you can see the motion of the particles maybe. Hopefully you can see the green dots as they bounce in front of the gray background. And the higher the value in K, the higher the temperature. And the lower the value, the lower the temperature. So if you can see that, the lowest number would have the slowest particles. And the highest number over here, 417 K, would have the fastest moving particles. Another way of visualizing that is to look at the average speed over here. So we say the greater the temperature of an object or substance, the faster its particles are moving. So what you're going to see here are four jars, two red, two blue. So the two red jars have hot water with red food coloring inside them, and the blue jars have cold water with blue food coloring inside them. What I'm going to do is take this first red jar and put it on top of the blue jar. So hot water on top, cold water on bottom. And you're going to watch me make a big mess on my kitchen counter right about here as well. All right, so I want you to think about the level of mixing that's going on right here. So we, again, have the red food coloring up top blue down below, think about how much mixing is happening. Now I'm going to show you the opposite phenomenon. So I'm going to take the cold water and put it on top of the hot water. So I want you to think about, anticipate how much mixing you're going to see here. Actually, I am going to pause the video right here, and I do want you to think about a hypothesis as to whether or not you think there will be more mixing or less mixing, and why. So what do you think? And the question is why? Why do you see more mixing in the second scenario? I want you to think about temperature and density. All right, and so let's talk about what you just saw. And the take home message here is that higher temperature fluid, which are gases and liquids, are less dense and rise up as a result. So when I had them separated right here already where the higher temperature substance was on top, it didn't need to do anything. It was already separated, and that means there was no motion. There's no mixing going on. You can have somewhat stable layers. This happens even in the ocean where you have stable layers of different densities form based on temperature. And then if you look over here, I did the opposite, right? And so there needed to be mixing going on because the higher temperature stuff was originally down here and the lower temperature stuff was up here, that means this needed to go down and would sink, and this originally was the hot water that would rise up. And so there was mixing that went on in this case, because the higher temperature liquid was less dense and it rose up. So that's a concept to hold on to, to understand what we're going to be talking about. All right, and what you're going to see here is I've got a setup with a plastic bin and some water set inside the plastic bin. 
and I'm going to drop in two ice cubes. Both have been frozen with water that has blue food coloring added to them so that you can see the motion of the water as those ice cubes melt. All right, and there comes a point where I probably should have noticed that the flame was a bit too high for the plastic part that goes into my refrigerator. And I was so intent on getting the demo to work correctly that I waited an extra few seconds here. That's all right, although my wife is demanding I take her out to dinner to make up for it. All right, and here I really want you to focus on the red water as it heats up. You're going to see it rise. You can already see the blue water sinking because that blue water is colder, so therefore it's more dense. And as that red water is going to rise, some of the blue water is going to come over and fill its spot, so to speak. So there's a saying that nature abhors a vacuum. Abhors means doesn't like. And so you could think of it as the area where the red water is rising up has now less pressure and the area to the left of it, that volume of water, is going to have greater pressure. So that greater pressure water fills in the void that's left by the lower pressure water. It kind of rushes over to fill the spot, so to speak. Okay, and here's something really interesting has happened. I took too long to turn down the flame, and that's okay. The main idea, though, is the flame gets turned down, and notice that the whole cycle really shuts down. So if you think about it, why is that? Why, if I turn the flame way down, does the motion really kind of shut down? Why does this all depend on that heat source right in the middle there? So I guess you could say it's still working, just not as dramatically or as quickly as before. And that's because we still have some heat entering into the system. All right, and so I do want to talk about what you just saw there, our second demo that showed a convection current. All right, and so what I'm going to do actually is break this lesson up into two parts before the lesson gets to be too long. So you should be able to see a link in the upper right popping up right about now. So please stick around for the summary and how we can apply this to geology as well. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. Have a great day.